We actually start talking about this in section uh, 2.2. We did a few examples in that. So we're going to continue with it, um, put more challenging problems. But I'll start just quickly with a simpler one, negative 4x plus 7 equals 3. Remember the goal, all the x's on one side, all the numbers on the opposite side. I can accomplish this if I take the plus 7 and move it to that side. If I do that, change side, change sign. No, notice negative 4x staying on the same side, so there's no change in that. The 3 is not moving, there's no change in the sign. But the plus 7 is going to go there, it becomes what? Negative 7. Negative 4x equals what? What's 3 minus 7? Negative 4. Now we have a multiplication. What is the opposite to multiplications? We divide. And x will have to be what? 1. If you want to know if you did it right or not, you can take the 1, plug it in. You can always check your answer. That's one way to see if you did it right. How do you check your answer? You go back to the original problem and take the, instead of x, take x out, put the value of x, which is 1, and see if the left side equals the right side. What's negative 4 times 1? Negative 4 plus 7. What's negative 4 plus 7? Isn't that 3? So is 3 equals 3? Yes, it is. So that's how we test to see if we did the problem correctly. We take the answer, plug it in. If the left side matches the right side, then we have a solution. I'll try a couple more. And again, we said solve linear equation by combining properties. Notice we combine two properties. We have an addition. To cancel the addition, we subtract. And we also have a multiplication. To cancel the multiplication, we divide. Three f minus 12 equals negative f minus the 15. Again, I want all the F's on one side. I want this F to come to this side, and I want all the numbers on the opposite side. Change side, change sign. So there's the 3F. It's not changing sides. But the minus F is coming from that side of the equation to this side. That becomes plus F. There is the negative 15. It's not changing side. The minus 12 is going from this side of the equation to that side becomes what? Positive 12. 3f and f? 4f, because that's a 1 here. What's negative 15 plus 12? And now i got to solve for f. <coughs> I need to make sure this is 1, so you divide by what? Four. F equals negative three over four. Let's put one with fractions, since we all like fractions. One-third W minus one-sixth W equals two-thirds. Now, I know a lot of you are not a fan of fractions. I don't think there's that many people who like fractions. So you can actually get rid of all the fractions. How? 
which is what? What's the LCD for 3, 6, and 3? 6. Let's multiply every term by 6. Remember, the 6 is 6 over what? 1. 6 times 1? 6. 6 divided by 3. What's 6 over 3? This is 2W. Minus... 6 times 1? Six. 6 over 6. What's 6 over 6? One. 1 W. Equals 6 times 2? 12. 12 divided by 3? There's no more fractions. So if you multiply by the LCD, all the fractions should disappear. Again, if I multiply that too quick for you, go 6 over 1 times 1 over 3. Go to the side. 6 times 1, 6. 1 times 3 is 3. What's 6 over 3? 2. That's where that 2 came from. The next one, 6 over 1 times 1 over 6. 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 6 is 6. 6 over 6, 1. That's where the 1 came from. And the last one, 6 over 1 times 2 over 3. 6 times 2, 12. 1 times 3 is 3, 12 over 3, which is 4, and that's where the 4 came from. If you put 4 over 1, yeah. So now, what's 2w minus w, or 1w? W. w equals what? Four. Oh, 4, yeah. I'm going to say W equals W. W equals 4. And that's the solution. Every term. Even if, it was, if one didn't have a fraction in it. So here's another one. I'll make one since you brought that question up. Three over five x minus one fifth equals two. Remember the two is two over one. What is the LCD for five, five, and one? Five. I'm gonna multiply each one of them by five. each one by five. Here we go, the first one. Five over one times three over five. What's five times three? 15, 15 over five, which is what? Three. That's a three X. The next one, one over five times five, or five over one. One times five? over five times one, and that's a one. And the last one, five over one times two over one. Five times two, 10 over one, which is 10. The fractions are gone. Now let's take the minus one, change side, change sign. 3x equals 10 plus 1, which is what? 11. And to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 3 to make it a 1. x equals 11 over 3. Simplify to what? Oh, I mean, write it as a mixed number? Yeah. Doesn't really matter, but if they want it as a mixed number, a lot of people think mixed number is a better way of writing than improper fraction. Not really. It's just preference. If you go 11 by 3, that's 3. 3 times 3 is 9. What's the remainder? 2. It is 3 and 2 thirds. 
So if this said write the answer as an improper fraction, you leave it like this, right? As a mixed number, leave it like that. If they don't say anything, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Either way is fine. Okay. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. Let's say we have this one two times. T minus three minus three times T minus two equals T plus eight. Yep, distribute that. Two, take that two, multiply it by these two. Then take the negative three, multiply it by these two. And let's see what we're going to have. Two times t. Two times three. Negative three times t. Negative 3 times a negative 2. Good. Now, before we start moving things from side to side, let's simplify the left side. Collect like terms. What's 2t minus 3t? Positive or negative? Negative 1t. What's a minus 6 plus 6? Zero. Zero. That's gone. Now again, my goal is to make sure all the t's on one side. Let me take this t to this side. Change side, change sign. This becomes minus t. What's minus 1t minus t? And to solve for t, we're going to divide both sides now by two. negative 2. t equals positive over negative. That's a negative 4. Let's try a bigger one than this one. Maybe one more, actually, of these. Those are good. Two times x plus 5 minus x minus 2 equals 3 times 4x plus 6 plus 7. I made that up. I figured let's go crazy. Sometimes what I do here is bigger than anything you're going to see on the homework or the quiz. Figure if you can do these, you can do anything we give you. Distribute those. Two x, good. Keep going. Plus ten. I'll take that. Negative x. Plus two. Notice the minus sign here is going to change all the signs on the inside. It makes it, it's actually a minus 1. We just don't put the 1. Minus x plus 2. Now that one. 12x 12 12 plus 18 plus the 7. Let's clean each side while we add it. 2x minus x. 1x or x, that's fine. This with that. How about this one with this one? Plus 12. Plus 12 on this side. Here's the 12x. These two are like terms. 25. 
25. And now that looks like similar to what we just did a few minutes ago. I want to move the x's to one side. I always move the x to the left side. It doesn't really matter which side. I'm just one of those people like the x on the left side. The number's on the right side. So I'll have 1x. When you bring the 12x, becomes a minus 12x. 25 is not moving, so the sign doesn't change, still plus 25. When you take the plus 12 there, it becomes negative 12. One X minus 12 X is what? 11 X, 25 minus 12. Again, I wanna solve for one X. I'm gonna divide this side by negative 11. X equals negative 13 over 11. I like to put the minus in the front. So I gave you some parentheses here. What about if I have more than one set of parentheses? Groups, uh, square bracket, parentheses, all the good stuff. Well, let's see. Let me write the problem. Let's, let's start with the right side. That's the easier one to fix. That's straightforward. This is where the problem is. When you see this, you always want to work from the inside out. Always. So you got to do this one first, because that's the most inner one. There's that four. I'm going to simplify that. What's plus 2 times x? What's plus 2 times a minus 1? <coughs> Negative 2. So I work from the inside out. And while we add it, let's simplify what's inside the brackets. What's 4 minus the 2? 2 plus the 2x. So I got to distribute that one. So I'll make it 13 minus 2 minus 2x equals 3x plus 6. What's 13 minus 2? I always move x to the left, so I'm gonna change my mind now. I'm gonna move it to the right, just to show it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter which side you move them to. So this becomes what? 11 minus the six equals what? 3x. When you move the minus 2x, there is what? Plus 2x. 11 minus 6 is 5 equals what? 5x. I got to solve it for 1x. I got to divide this side by 5, which means divide this side by also 5. x equals to 1. And that's section 2.3, combining both properties together.